I distinctly remember. It was a weekend in the year 2009. My husband and I were sitting and watching TV, a family drama, when the topic of our younger son came up. He was transitioning from school to college and was looking on taking up animation as a vocation, something my husband and I didn't know anything about. Leave alone its future. And we were trying to dissuade this young boy, Vivek, from taking up animation. Something snapped inside me when I heard my husband say, let him do it if he wants to. I looked at him with dismay. He repeated, let him do it if he wants to. I looked at him again, angrily this time, and started lecturing him on parenthood. He stuck to his point. Needless to say, I did too. A pleasant evening became hostile. Subdued whispers became aggressive. We turned our backs to each other and slept that night. And didn't speak to each other for the next one week. Rewinding a bit, I come from a fairly traditional home where there is a love-hate relationship with money. Not quite sure whether it should be loved or it should be hated. Or was there a shade in the middle? My father was an Indian Air Force pilot. My mother was a home homemaker. I'm second out of the three siblings. Gratitude was taught to us from childhood. Be happy with what you have. Don't be greedy. Money spoils relationships. Even talking about it today makes me feel guilty. Am I being ungrateful to my parents? My father was my hero and my mother was my provisioner. They meant well, there was always laughter in the house. But what clouds my memory even today is the worried look on their faces when they had to pay our school fees. Pennies were counted when outings were planned. One Sunday a month, we went out to eat dosas. One dosa each. If we asked for a second one, my mother put her share into our plate. We loved having visitors and put our best foot forward as hosts. The moment visitors came, FHB, family hold back, was a signal to the family for holding back on snacks and goodies. As children, we waited for the visitors to leave to pounce on the leftovers. Vacations were a no-no. Summer holidays, we went out to our relatives' places, and we were trained not to be extravagant during the holidays. What we really waited for was bidding farewell to our, left ho to our relatives. That we got money as blessings, and that was the moment we really waited for. I loved Hindi movies, and I always saw the hero as a poor man, and the villain as a rich man trying to torture the poor hero. Mere paas bangla hai, gari hai, bank balance hai, tumhare paas kya hai? Dialogues like this from my favorite hero, Amitabh Bachchan, made an impact on me. Thus began a battle, internal battle, between my heart and the brain. My brain always seeking for more financial bliss, but my heart always saying, be happy with what you have, don't be greedy, money spoils relationships. The debate inside me continued and the conflict between my heart continued. What fueled this conflict was another fact, my ailment, osteochondritis. This is an ailment where the cartilage detaches itself, forms stones and becomes really hard and painful. I was the sixth case in Asia to be diagnosed with osteochondritis. I was a model patient for Rajiv Gandhi Cancer Institute. And guess what happened? I started getting a lot of recognition. I was the sixth case, model patient, wow. I started getting a lot of attention and a lot of care, love, passion. All that came my way, a lot of recognition. All that came my way. I started drifting in the world of self-pity and self-denial. I became complacent with pain, happy with pain. If it wasn't financial recognition, this was the recognition that fueled the compassion in me. I loved it and I was happy with pain. At that time, I was given six months to live. More attention, more recognition. Wow, 
I continued living. That's why I'm here today. Now, that was amazing feeling. 30 years, three decades, ladies and gentlemen, 30 years I stayed with that ailment. I loved it so much. 30 years I was a recipient of all the love and attention I want. But today it's a different story. And we are talking about replaced knees and rods in my legs. And they dare not mess with my hustle. Story continued. I got married to an Indian Air Force pilot, a fighter pilot at that, and became very comfortable in my comfort zone. This is how the world moves. My mind was set. I started teaching the same philosophy to my children. Be happy with what you want. Don't be with what you have. I beg your pardon. Don't be greedy. Money spoils relationships. Children started growing and rebelling. They wanted more financial bliss, more financial freedom, and were ready to work with for it. But I didn't want them to venture on a space I didn't know anything about. Kept pulling them down, kept stopping them from doing anything that I was not aware of. And I realized that history was repeating itself with me and my children. About nine years back, when my husband passed away, I felt like the ground was ripped from beneath me shattering my world into a million pieces. I felt physically and emotionally weak. I often wondered if I would be able to face the financial challenges without him. Questions of financial stability loomed large. There were so many financial commitments. Home loan had to be paid. There was so much to find out about this unknown territory finance. Laughter, which was once a constant, became a bitter reminder of what was lost. My husband had left us with a lot of unanswered questions and a space which the three of us, me and my sons, had no idea existed. But then, on a day that felt like any other, a turning point arrived. I met a very successful businessman. He had multiple business to his, businesses to his credit, his family members were a part of his business. In fact, his journey into the business ecosystem had been a very difficult one. He had risen from the labor class and was now heading successful companies. His claim to fame was multiple streams of income. It was a classic example of an ordinary man daring to dream big and working hard to realize his dreams. He often told me, Suman, if you don't change your relationship with money, it will never come to you. Power of attraction, you see. Don't you want energy? Hearing those words repeatedly, something happened inside me. My brain got rewired. Suddenly, I found the answer to the question I was trying to solve for so many years. My thoughts and myths about money changed for good. I started exploring the financial ecosystem with my team, my two children. It was like the first rays of dawn breaking through a long, dark night. Laughter returned. It was a fragile return, but it was a promise. It was a return of some sort of normalcy. It is my earnest wish that the youngsters today and all of us together do not cross the essence, do not miss the essence of the life's most crucial moments, overshadowed by financial burdens. Financial well-being should be a foundation, not a barrier, allowing us to embrace life's joys without compromise. Repeatedly hearing, money is not everything, it can't buy everything, it had taken me to my middle age to realize, yes, Money can't buy everything, but what it can buy is not bad. Money is like, money is like that magic wand that has the capacity of opening doors and stirring storms all at one go. It's about having a cushion of security, knowing that you can sail through difficult times in life. And that's what it's all about. Now visualize this. It's a dark night. 
you're fast asleep in bed. The world is quiet. But your money is wide awake working for you. That is the potential of multiple channels of revenue, ladies and gentlemen. That is the potential of multiple channels of revenue taking you into this enchanting world of bliss. Look at money as energy. Do not give it negative thoughts. Now let's talk about the how and now. In fact, I would, before I get into the how and now, I would like to remind you of this quote. If you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. This quote from Warren Buffett suddenly started making a lot of sense to me. Now let's talk about the how and now. How do you make money? That's the question. That's the boiling question. How do you make money in this digital world, in this di digital ecosystem? There is so much money movement on the net. Ever thought of directing some to your bank account? Now let me talk about some businesses that have blossomed in the recent past. Uber has no vehicles, has no transportation, yet is a taxi company. Facebook creates no content, yet it's a content platform. Airbnb has no real estate, yet it's an accommodation rental company. Alibaba.com has no inventory. Booking.com owns no hotels. Amazon and eBay sell other people's products, and banks sell other people's money, and the list goes on. Time and money are two matrices. All these company have, companies have one success mantra. They trade, they sell, or they give value to people's time in exchange for money. They are connectors, connecting the buyers and the sellers. Now let's demystify this story. But before we do that, as the saying goes, you have to get the soil ready before you can plant the seed and have a flourishing plant growing right there. So let's talk about the first step, it's the mindset. The moment you think about multiple streams of income, what happens? Suddenly, there is a whole lot of negative thoughts that come to you. Your inner voice that tells you why it can't and won't happen. There is a short circuit of neurons in your brain, a huge amount of chaos that happens in your brain which forces you to stop or take two steps back. Sounds familiar, isn't it? Go tell that the people who believe in that, chadar lambi karo. Go get a double bed sheet so that you can spread your hands and legs and sleep comfortably. Addressing your mindset is extremely simple. Change your thoughts by and rewire your brain. That's all it takes. But you need to unwire and unfire before you rewire and refire. You need to deprogram before you reprogram and it becomes a software in your brain, your new inner voice. Paise ped pe to nahi ukte. We've heard this, plenty of you have heard this. To those who've heard this, go to that thought and say, of course paise ped pe ukte. Money is made of paper and paper grows on trees. On a lighter note, if money didn't come from trees, why do banks have branches? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, once you've addressed your mindset, the next thing to open your eyes to is the internet, the web. Because people are there, people are looking for things. Give them what they want without being judgmental. Just give them what they have won. There's so much business happening on the net. Most of us are very happy buying on the net, but not happy selling on the net. Convert selling to value and wealth and watch magic happen. Ladies and gentlemen, you have the internet. You have the people. You have the thought process. And you have the appetite for doing exactly what you want to do. Follow your passion, but ensure that the passion can be monetized. Now, it took me a long time to open my eyes, a very long time. I remember Raj, my husband, walking towards the taxi to go to the airport. He came back and bent down. I remember his breath near my left ear. He said three words, three words to me, three important words, but the words were not, I love you. The words were, just in case, after visiting, after whispering the password to his laptop, I turned to him and said, I don't need that. He repeated, just in case. After his funeral, 
I was sitting on his study table. I felt somebody pushing my hands towards his laptop. It wasn't me, I can swear it wasn't me doing it voluntarily. I felt my hand go to the laptop and open the laptop and punch in the password that he has whispered to me. And what emerged in front of me was an Excel sheet with different streams of revenue, options of different streams of revenue, which I had closed my eyes to. It cost me a lot to open my eyes to that. And what was written in bold was the name of our two sons, Varun and Vivek. And what he said was, listen to them. They have the aptitude, they have the knowledge, and they have the appetite for risk. Listen to them. I turned over my shoulder. The two boys were standing behind me. For the first time, I didn't see them as children. I saw them as young men. They were your age at that time. I saw them at, as young men. They were standing there saying, Mom, we are there. Mom, speak to us. Tell us what you want. We are there for you. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, it cost me a lot to reach that stage. We were mother and son by chance, but we became best of friends by choice from that day. I only wish I could rewind my life. If that was one thing I could change in my life, it would be listening to them, point number one, and ensuring that I had multiple streams of revenue which didn't make me insecure at the loss of my loved one. I could focus more on him instead of focusing on my finances. We are marching to an unfamiliar tune. The appetite of the millennials or the young people or people like you and the comfort of the senior people or the security of the senior people or the backing of the senior people makes a superb combo. Let generations and uh, mindsets not come in the way of financial bliss. Let's focus on relationships. Let's get our money right. Let's focus on relationships with people and with money. So ladies and gentlemen, if you're single, get into a relationship with money. And if you're married, have an extramarital relationship with money. Thank you.